The Oxford Dictionary of National Biography uh, is a compendium of the thousands of lives of men and women who have made British history across the best part of two millennia, and not just in Britain, but around the globe. At the moment, it consists of almost 60,000 lives of such people, uh, written by more than 11,000 scholars, each of them preeminent and expert in their fields. Uh, it's an enterprise sponsored and promoted by the History Faculty of Oxford University, and it's published by Oxford University Press. One of the many strengths of the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is that we take a very inclusive approach to who should be given an entry. Uh, we try to give as much prominence as we can uh, to women as well as men, especially to women's lives that may have been lost to history but can now be recovered from history. We don't just focus on men, mainly men of affairs, public figures, but we also like to include and are eager to include people who have made enormous contributions to British public life across a whole range of activity, uh, artists, scientists, entertainers, authors, uh, engineers, and people in many other walks of life besides that. So getting yourself included uh, in the ODNB isn't so much an honour, on the contrary, it's an attempt to recognise the importance of the contribution that has been made to the life of this country by the person about whom an entry uh, has been written. It's also the case that not all of the people that we have included and are including in the ODNP would necessarily be thought to be admirable or virtuous people. Uh, the historic significance of a person may, and we may like to wish it to be, that they've done some good, but actually quite a lot of people of historic significance have done harm, uh, and part of our mission is to make sure that they are included as well. As its name suggests, the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is predominantly concerned about Britain, but it's about Britain and British lives thought of in a variety of imaginative ways. Uh, it's partly about the lives of British people uh, lived out uh, abroad, uh, often of course in what was once the British Empire, or perhaps uh, as business people in places as far apart as Shanghai and Buenos Aires. Uh, it's also about people who were born abroad, uh, who spent considerable parts of their life in Britain, among them, for example, uh, Karl Marx, who spent a great deal of his time in London and who is brilliantly biographed by Eric Hobsbawm. So the ODNB is not about the British nation narrowly conceived. Uh, it's about the British nation as a global nation. It's about Britons going overseas and it's about overseas people coming to Britain. And looked at in that way, uh, it conveys very vividly the rich, varied texture of the lives that were lived in Britain by many people, some of them not at all Britons, and British lives lived overseas as well. And in that sense, although it is a national biography, uh, it's really a dictionary of global biography. There are nearly 60,000 lives recorded in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography and they've been written by more than 11,000 contributors who come from 50 countries. We have an elaborate procedure for selecting what we hope is the right person to write the right life. Uh, some of these lives are of considerable length, that of Winston Churchill is well above 25,000 words. Other lives must perforce be put in a shorter compass. But whatever the length of the life, uh, we try to ensure that we get an expert uh, to write it uh, and to ensure that it's a life of exceptionally high quality. We also, in the case of public figures, have a varied approach to the sort of person who ought to write them. Uh, in the case of Winston Churchill, for example, we have a marvellous life written by Paul Addison, uh, a professional 20th century historian uh, who has written more about Winston Churchill than probably uh, anyone else of his generation. But we also on occasions like to have fellow politicians uh, evoking the life of a major public figure. So for example, uh, Roy Jenkins wrote a marvellous entry on Harold Wilson, a very appropriate twinning of author and subject, both of them of course Oxford graduates, uh, and Roy Jenkins indeed Chancellor of Oxford, 
And while we take a broad and Catholic view of the sort of people who should contribute to the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, there are occasions when Oxford people are the best possible choices to write about other Oxford people. One of the many pleasures of being general editor of the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography is that it's constantly a work in progress that's both renewing itself and updating itself. New information comes to light about figures from the past who already have entries, uh, and if that's important enough, we then like to update earlier entries to take account of that. And of course, uh, in the, our own times, people are constantly dying, uh, and many of them deserve entries in the ODNB, and we have to commission entirely new entries of their lives. So one of the issues that I'm struggling with at the moment as the new editor of the ODNB is who is going to write the life of Margaret Thatcher. So the ODNB is a work constantly in progress and in January and in May and in September we put up on our website uh, either updated old lives or entirely new lives and that's one of the reasons it's very important to keep checking in on our website to find out what's been going on. In 2004, the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography was published in hard copy uh, in 60 magnificent volumes by Oxford University Press. But it was also, from its inception, made available online. And it's now accessible uh, via the libraries of uh, colleges and universities and virtually all public libraries in this country. And it's also accessible by individuals who have memberships of public libraries using their public library cards. So one of its great merits and virtues uh, is that it's widely accessible to a very large audience in this country and also increasingly around the world. Uh, and that enormously enhances the range and reach of what we do. And it makes the ODNB more than ever uh, an essential part of the national culture, and of the national conversation about what it is and what it means to have been British and to be British today and what it has meant and what it means now to understand the part played by thousands and thousands of men and women in the history of our nation.